Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's May the 4th, 2021. I bring this financial plan public hearing uh, to order at 6.30 p.m. In the room we have tonight, uh, Mr. Arby, uh, uh, Councillor Friesen, Councillor Morio, uh, CEO uh, Poole. We will have with us in the room shortly, uh, Councillor Delorier and Deputy Mayor Wintoni, and by video we have Councillor White, Director uh, Fedorchuk, uh, CFO Ganita, and Chief Fedorchuk. Result of the agenda for the May 4th special meeting of Council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councillor White? Okay, moving on at uh, 3.1. Resolve the Council open the 2021 financial plan public hearing. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So, uh, Council has deliberated over the past uh, few months uh, for um, to, to come up with an acceptable budget for 2021 to be presented. Because of the restrictions of COVID-19, the presentation will be through uh, video conferencing. Indiv individuals were asked or invited to, uh, uh, sorry, to be invited by April the 30th. We did have some interest, but so far I see that we do not have any that have entered the, the, the meeting. CAO Poole will present the budget the following will be questions in regards to the budget 2021. Those questions will be directed to myself. She just entered the meeting now. Okay. Uh, Ms. Medwood, we're just uh, entering the, the discussion on the financial plan. And as I was just uh, saying, you just uh, missed, but uh, what I was going to say is CEO Poole will present the budget. Uh, following will be questions in regards to budget 2021. Those questions will be directed to myself, and I will forward uh, those questions either to uh, one of the councillors or to one of our directors or to the CEO. Once the question uh, are concluded, uh, we will then adjourn the public hearing. So with that said, uh, CEO Poole. Okay, everyone has the financial plan in front of them, hopefully. I do have a, a, a PDF presentation for everyone. I'm just going to share my screen and get it up. It will be uh, just a general generalization of the budget. We can get into specifics if there are specific questions uh, after the presentation. See that? Yes. Okay. So to begin, uh, according to the Municipal Act, uh, the Town of Swan River has to prepare a balanced operating budget, a five-year capital plan, uh, which is an estimate of operating revenues and expenditures for our fiscal year. Uh, we are required to be passed or, or s submit a passed and signed budget uh, to the province prior to May 15th. Uh, so away we go. But those are the restrictions that the town has to follow according to the province. Uh, to let everyone know, uh, our budget schedule, how the process works. 
uh, or at least we'll be working uh, from now on is uh, July 20, you know, July 2021 prelim budgets are drafted, uh, operating plans are, are looked at by administration, reviewed by senior management over August. Uh, uh, basically the first, uh, first and second drafts of the budget through, through October and final drafts of the budget in around November uh, for council to review. Uh, at this time, if we follow this, uh, it'll be pretty typical that the town will start their construction programs. We'll have, we'll have uh, hopefully in the future, one and three year, three year budgets pre presented, so we'll have a really good idea of what's coming. Uh, and obviously, there are processes that the town has to do in January, like year end. So the financial plan hearing will still be passed in March, but we're hoping our budgets to be uh, finalized in October, November, moving forward. So hopefully 2021 is the last year that we do this uh, this year. But just to give everyone an idea of how it, will, how it will happen, what the proposed budget schedules are from year to year. So our 2021 budget priorities were to re maintain and review levels of service in comparison to previous years. Uh, create any additional self-sustaining infrastructure and ensure available financial resources to participate in uh, federal and provincial uh, grant opportunities. And uh, just to mention that our, our Town of Swan River Strategic Resource Management Plan is in progress. So that kind of fits in with what the, the, the cycle schedule that I just went over is, is a part of our strategic plan and uh, hopefully that document will be ready uh, fall 2021. But uh, as an uh, overview, the, the municipal property tax rate uh, for 2021, the mill rate is 21.749. That's a 2% increase from 2020. Uh, just a couple highlights is an 80% increase to reserve contributions and a 100% increase in our federal gas tax contribution from the federal government. But as you'll see later on, uh, we have increased our reserve contributions uh, significantly. Other highlights, uh, $2.185 million in new capital improvements, including the water treatment plant PLC upgrade, our environmental impact study for the lagoon, the Legion Park uh, path upgrades, uh, we have a second street south uh, uh, investment and development to finish off our main street uh, renewal, wellness center repairs, and a new grader. Maybe not new, but a new to us grader. Uh, to go over our revenues, uh, our taxes bring in, or our municipal revenues are just over $8 million. Uh, we do we do collect our fees, so our, our fees did change approximately 2% increase on general fees. That didn't include any permits or applications or cost recovery fees like uh, the handy ban, uh, but it was mostly general 2% increase on in our fees for 2021. Uh, we have our federal and provincial operating grants. That includes the restart grant, uh, totaling 559949 and like I said, our federal gas tax grant uh, to reserves 432,040. So I added in a, a bar graph just so everyone can see. Everyone can see where you know where we get our revenues from. It's it's not very uniform. A lot is from taxes, uh, grants, and our landfill scale are pretty much the majority. The rest are pretty small slivers, but uh, every dollar counts. So the property value uh, in relation to taxes, our property growth rate in Swan River rose by a half a percent from 2020. And uh, the breakdown of those values is 65.3% in residential, commercial 34.4% in ag agricultural representing 0.3%. How our taxes are calculated is based on the provincial portioning system 
uh, 45% for residential and 65% uh, for commercial properties. So our property tax, uh, we, don't, we don't have any responsibility on establishing the education levy. It does contribute 40% of all uh, taxes in 2020, 2021. 62% of our budgeted revenues comes from our property taxes within town and that totals $5,082,115. And to give everyone, I think this is pretty important. Uh, so I just need to move this up. It's pretty important to compare our meal rates if the, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of people use that as the basis of their determining what our taxes are, but uh, uh, we have a 2.5% decrease from 2019 2020 due to COVID, the town did reduce its its budget uh, last minute, and the 2021 presented budget uh, represents a 2.2 percent increase from 2020. With the assessment changes, we are estimating that increase to be uh, around three percent. So, what will those taxes cost on an average $150,000 uh, market value uh, house? Uh, this the apportioned assessment uh, is $67,500. Annual property taxes would be $1,468 at a monthly cost of $122.41. So I just listed out a couple other monthly expenses. Pretty typical is a daily large coffee at a local coffee shop would cost you around $61 a month. And your Westman Home Choice TV package is around $115 a month. So pretty, uh, pretty fair for the services that you get, I guess, in my opinion. To move into our expenses, our entire municipal expenditure uh, is $8,052,361. Uh, in this bar graph, you can see that our expenditures are much more uniform. Uh, the light orange, I know there's a lot of them there, but uh, you can see protective services, uh, that is 16, here. Uh, protective services represent 21% of our budgeted expenditures, uh, followed by environmental health at 16%, recreation at 14%, transportation 13%, uh, fiscal services 12%, general government services 10 percent and uh, our reserve contribution which increased this year they're at nine percent and uh, the remaining services are basically two percent less the little slivers but uh, much more uniform than our revenues spreading wealth so just a couple of various programs that i don't think we mentioned enough uh the, but our you know they need to be need to be mentioned or the operation of the airport cost the town $64,000. Our library at 94,000, Swan Valley Rise contribution of 47,000. The incentive plan of uh, $40,000. Doctor recruitment at $64,000. And our 2021 Canada Day celebrations at 25,500. Pending restrictions. So to get into our, our detailed departments, uh, general government services, which is our office expenses, postage, hydro supplies, uh, $140,000, legal services for assessments, taxation, $114,000, general administration, including payroll, uh, et cetera, just over $450,000. So total general government services, 811,782, which is a 1.7% increase over 2020. Protective Services Department, uh, we have our fire service at 304,450. And our police service, which represents 15% of the municipal expenditure at 1,214,500 for a total budget of $1,694,000, a 1.9% increase over 2020. 
transportation services. Uh, just to mention a couple, there's there's a lot more in the financial plan, but a couple of the big hitters, road maintenance, 109,000, includes crack sealing and pothole fixing, etc. cetera. Uh, snow and ice removal, 103,940. Uh, our street lighting cost, $80,000. And storm sewer repairs, $34,000. <clears> Total budget one million twenty eight thousand dollars, a three point four percent increase over twenty twenty. The environmental health services are uh, to collect all of our waste, uh, three hundred and forty eight thousand dollars. That's for residential and commercial collection. Uh, the landfill costs us four hundred twenty one thousand dollars. And recycling $481,000 that's to collect and process recycling. So total budget of $1.266 million, a 0.6% increase over 2020. Public health and welfare, which is our cemetery at $82,465, doctor recruitment $64,224, and social assistance at $43,755, which is a, a set number. Uh, that will decrease from last year 4.8%. Uh, Regional planning and development, communities in bloom, uh, 5,900. Lights and decorations, 9,300. I know there's some new flags and banners in, in that uh, line item. Urban weed control, which is our grass cutting, $12,000. Planning and zoning, $7,600. Beautification, $3,300. Total budget, $38,208, a 21.2% increase from 2020. And I believe that increase is due to the, the new flags and uh, some man hours in there, uh, as I believe the Main Street banners are, are blind again. The Resource Conservation Industrial Development. Swan Valley Rise, 47330 Our incentive plan, tourism costs, 10160 And the water conservation contribution, 15442 For a total budget of 133344 an 18.9% increase over 2020. Our recreation services include the rink, $383,000, the Aquatic Center, $435,000, the Veterans Hall at $161,000, and our Parks and Playgrounds, uh, just under $87,000. Our total budget of $1.219 million, a nearly 15% decrease from 2020. I know a lot of that decrease uh, contributes to the operational changes in the pool, obviously, and the fact that we've been shut down for a good portion of the year. Utility services are to provide our water services in town, $512,000. Sewer service expenditure, $236,000, uh, and including other expenses, uh, Uh, 495297 So our revenues match our expenditures. All utility costs are paid for by the utility, uh, which is budgeted at $1.322 million. Fiscal services. So our debenture debt payments this year are $674,068. Our capital programs from taxes this year are 214744 for our fiscal services budget of 888812 a 32.7% increase from 2020. Uh, that is mostly due to our increase to transfers to reserves, which in this year is 736840 So what I, I believe to be the most important slide in the presentation, uh, 2021 includes no new debt obligations uh, for 2021.
to list our current debt obligations, we have municipal office, the wellness center, capital, uh, 12th and third base work, the arena floor work that was done, uh, SCBAs for the fire department, incident command vehicle for the fire department, our loader, and further pool repairs. So our 2021 capital program uh, for department, under the fire department, uh, more PPE, I believe, Darren can correct me, but I believe those are, those are four, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Are they SCBs? Oh, there'll be four sets of turnout gear, part of our uh, regular rotation program. Thank you, Fire Chief Fedorchuk. Uh, so turnout gear, four sets. Transportation is the main, main street renewal. Uh, we plan $40,000 in sidewalk repairs, a new to us grader, uh, a new utility tractor, our engineering survey equipment, which has been purchased, and uh, landfill berm and shredding. Under the utility, as said before, the water treatment plant PLC upgrades and the impact study for the lagoon, uh, recreation, the Legion Park path upgrades, uh, Further upgrades to the pool, the boiler access door, skimmer, and the lawsuit, uh, and then our development, our second street self development uh, infrastructure project. Uh, and there's a, a list of our partners. There's, I guess it's important for me to say that these are currently in, in negotiations, but these revenues have been accounted for in our 2021 budget. So like I said, that was pretty general. Uh, I didn't get into too many specifics, but a good overview of what 2021 is gonna look like, and I'll open it to the floor for any questions. Okay, so then the, uh, I believe that uh, Ms. Midwood, you may have had a copy, received a copy of the actual draft financial plan. Uh, so if you have it, that is available. And for anybody that is viewing uh, tonight too also, they have opportunity to get a copy of that. Uh, I'm sure at the office here or the administration would be willing to email that uh, copy to you as well. So I guess with that, uh, questions? Oh, me? Yeah, or if you know, the member of council has a question, they can also do that as well. So anybody that's like, willing to raise their hand and, and ask the question. Is it all You're cutting out. You're, you're going to have to go back because you completely okay. cut right. Okay. I, I have one question. Well, I have a few questions actually. I did kind of do a quick skim through the financial plan, but um, I don't really see any indication. Uh, the federal government uh, had grant money for the municipals, municipalities for uh, restarting the economy. That's correct. Are you back? I lost you guys. Yeah, you. you I am. You were asking about the federal. Okay. Um, so yeah. Yes, my understanding is the municipal, our municipal or town, I guess we're not a municipality. Uh, we received like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, it shows up in line nine ten of the budget. 9-10, okay. Where's 9-10? Uh, page two. On page two? Yeah. And what exactly did we spend that money on? That money was directed to the general budget. So that would cover for basically right across the whole board to save taxpayers any uh, additional uh, increase in taxes. Council felt that the best way okay. to do that was to uh, put it to the general. Okay, so um, 
then you're telling me my property taxes are not being increased this year. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that we've saved a, a larger increase. So how much are my property taxes going up this year? Uh, CEO Poole mentioned that earlier, approximately was 3%. Yeah. And that would differ from maybe from property owner to property owner, depending on their uh, assessments. Okay. Um, so when I read the guidelines for that grant money, it did kind of structure that it was supposed to be going towards economic or well, the economy. So reboosting the economy. So how does this help our businesses stay afloat? How does it go ahead? I, I guess if we didn't have this in the budget, we'd be raising taxes by $250,000 more than what we are now. So that's $250,000 that we're leaving in the economy. Okay. Um, the other question I have is the I, I'm a little confused on maybe I just need to ask how do we handle that allotment of money? What's the question? Does it get its own bank account to only be drawn on when it's directly related to snow removal? Sorry, I have horrible internet service. Um, you can hear me again? What, what you're, you're asking is that if we budget, say, $100,000 for snow removal, it sits in a line and we just kind of pull out of that line. Is that what you're asking? Because the town of Swan River... Well, I'm asking if it actually physically has its own account. No, the town of Swan River really just has one bank account. Uh, the CFA okay. probably can answer better than I can, but it basically has one bank account and administration and the CFO in particular manages all those dollars that flow through and they actually have a line specifically for each of those expenses or revenues coming in. That is how it's accounted. Okay. In, in regard to banking, yes, we have one account, but in regard to accounting, we every line is its own account within the town of Swan River. So yes, snow removal, the, the labor, any cost of materials, equipment repairs, any of that is charged to the snow removal account. So at, if you're okay. talking about a bank account, no. If you're talking about its own specific account that we <coughs> keep track of. Well, here's, here's where I'm a little confused is I know you got, well, the town didn't plow in March or April 2020 after those snow starts. I clearly remember because I was extremely frustrated for over a week because my car kept bottoming out and getting stuck when I was doing deliveries for my job. And then in November, you put a notice in the paper letting the ratepayers know that the town is over by so therefore you won't be paying for any overtime for snow removal or ice services. So how did you blow through the snow removal budget between February when you stopped plowing and November when the first ice or snowstorm hit? Because there was no snow in between there. Are you, are you talking about like February just this past or? February 2020. Well, there was no plowing after the snowstorms in March and April of 2020. There was no plowing after the snowstorms, or it was extremely slow in 2021. So, how did we blow through a snow removal budget in January and February of 2020, not identify it at this stage of the budget hearing? to then address it so that we would still have money come November and December of 2020. I believe what you're referring to is our advertisement that we were that we were looking at a deficit at the end of summer and fall last year. And so we, we did let the public know of some possibilities of services that would be cut back and may not be performed. Uh, 
I guess I can't recall right how many how many uh, times we went through the snow removal policy and how many I don't have that information with me right now, but uh, that was just a decision made at the end of summertime of what services and all the services we could provide can we maybe cut back to avoid a deficit in 2020. In in, in your budget that you look at. Uh, on line 32-37, snow and ice removal, you'll see in 2020, we budgeted for $101,200. And we actually, the action was 110, but that's through the whole year. So what we spent on, on grading or removing snow prior to the events that you're talking about, and then also through the rest of the year till January, that was all included with that. So we made the decision last year that uh, council was not gonna, trying to go into spending extra money on overtime if we could avoid it, just to save the taxpayer any further dollars spent. Councilor Morio. Um, I guess to better clarify what you're really asking with separate bank accounts, um, as CEO Poole said, there's a, we only have one bank account, and in the accounting system, there's different line accounts for each topic, but at the end of the day, there's one number. So as the year goes along, those accounts can be adjusted and council made the decision that uh, we could be forecasting a deficit and right across the board money was shifted and controls put in place to minimize and reduce or eliminate the deficit or projected deficit. So even though we're in a budget, it's a budget. And at the end of the year, we have to be on target and we don't want a deficit. So throughout the year, things can be massaged a little bit to make sure that the town does not create a deficit. So. Okay, then this brings me to my, my next question on the snow and ice removal. So in 2020, you budgeted for $101,000, give or take. You actually spent $110,000. There was very little snow this year compared to most years and yet for 2021 we're budgeting only a hundred and three thousand dollars well 104 if you round up the snow i'm i'm not <laughs> it's not making sense to me we i guess we don't pad our budgets just because the year prior the, the snow removal budget is definitely we keep a 10-year average. It's been as high as $188,000 and as low as $79,000 is, you know, in the past 12 years. Uh, maybe you're on the 79, that one I'm not sure on, but around $80,000, but as high as $180,000. So we, we like to keep that average. Uh, those are the extremes, but they're definitely, we keep an average and we want to keep in that area. We did raise the budget a little bit, uh, because we went over last year, but to ask council to just give us an extra twelve thousand just because last year was high, uh, we can't. We cannot do that. When you're recording those averages, are you also recording like this year was a low snowfall year, but yet you spent one hundred and ten thousand dollars? So when you're recording those averages, are you also recording any like ice storms, snowstorms, the amount? of snow uh, that's getting plowed and removed? We we may keep track of, it's tough because when, you know, you have a, a snow event period that happens twice within six days, you have to restart your your entire uh, policy and and you, you start with your major thoroughfares and, and go through the policy. But uh, there's, there's other things that happened as well in late 2020 was the, I believe there was an ice storm that caused us to, to purchase uh, a large amount of just pure salt. And we had that go on the roads because the roads had a quarter inch of pure ice on them. So things like that, that you know don't happen all the time, definitely do affect the budget. It, it, it does cost money to bring uh, pure salt from, from Saskatchewan here and to just apply, apply it directly to our roads. But that can be, I'm not saying that's just the one single reason, why it was over budget, but uh, things like that are hard to track when it comes to averages of the services that, it, that are given. 
Well, that's why I'm kind of wondering is with those 10 year amounts, like with each year, like for example, in 2020, are we going to acknowledge that there was a significant ice storm that involved extra expenses for salt just so that we can see why those numbers are there? Is it because we actually had large accumulation and numerous snowfalls? Is it because of one or two significant incidents? Because I'm not opposed as a taxpayer for spending money on a snow removal policy if it means for a safe road for not only myself, but I'm also thinking of citizens who are getting around because I have a little car, not a four by four. But the people who get around in scooters, wheelchairs, and by foot have a worse time than I do in my little car. So I'm not opposed to seeing that budget be appropriately used or charged. But that's why I'm kind of wondering, how are we managing this budget and kind of determining? It's great to hear you're doing like 10 year averages and keeping track of that. But why was it $188,000 a particular year? Was it only one or two significant storms or was it large accumulation? Is it one of those winters where we had blizzard after blizzard? We, we, we can't really keep, uh, keep going over this, you know, like I'm sure you have other questions, but if you, if you want more specific as far as detailed information of, of years past, other than outside the budget here, uh, I'm sure that CO Poo would be able to give you that information. For sure. Well, yeah, that would be great. But at the same time, I guess what it is, is I'm just not understanding how we're managing that particular budget line. Okay. Because if we've spent a hundred, like, how do we justify the number that you come up with? So the town does its for the 2021 best, budget. Right. The town does its best to provide us a level of service. So we've separated that with a, a snowfall under six inches and snowfall over six inches. We we try and keep that as vague as possible because. You know, there's a lot of reasons people call for service if you start getting detailed on when we're going to provide service. So uh, we do have our main thoroughfares and, uh, uh, you know, less used rows listed out what's going to happen first, second, third, downtown area, and, and lastly, the, the residential streets. But uh, there are different routes for the amount of snow, snow that falls. and. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the snow removal policy before, but I can definitely give it to you again. But that document <laughs> oh, no. gives, us the, gives us the... We're going to discuss that more in my delegation. <laughs> okay, that policy basically sets the tone for the level of service that we provide in town, which, which gives us the averages that we have on our expenditure for snow removal. Okay. Um, the Canada Day expenses for next year, is that carryover from the Manitoba 150 grant? Yes, it is. Okay. And, um, uh, where's my other? Okay. Under the, uh, I guess it's page one, the expenditures for the total municipal expenditures. The actual expenditures for 2020, majority of them appear to have gone down, but yet for 2021, we're budgeting significantly more. Why is that? Which line and specifically are you speaking of? Well, just in general, looking at the total municipal expenditures, but if we want specific ones, the fiscal services, uh, they were actually up this year and you're budgeting even higher for next year. And the uh, regional planning and development was up this year and you're budgeting even higher for next year. Fiscal has gone up. Uh, the federal government doubled our da gas tax contribution, so that that's a good chunk of why that's gone up. They've doubled how much they gave us 
I believe it's roughly 240, so we're getting roughly 480, somewhere in that ballpark. So that's a good chunk of that. And that get, goes into our gas tax reserve, which we then uh, in future years will withdraw from to pay for infrastructure projects. So just a quick overview, Karina. Uh, I'm gonna do it very quickly. Yep. Uh, I'll just go through the departments again and just to just let you know the percent increase and decrease of each department we have. So the, the general government services was an increase of 1.7%. Protective services increased 2%. Transportation increased 3.5%. The environmental health was an increase 0.6%. Public health and welfare was a decrease of 4.6%. Regional planning and development was an increase of 21.2%. I believe that's because the RISE contribution last year was significantly lower than it was this year. We've gone back to our regular RISE contribution. It's a three-year agreement. Three-year three agreement. Three year agreement. Three year agreement. Okay. But it was more this year than last year. Right. And resource conservation and industrial development is an increase of 23%. That's due to... Uh, I may have that backwards actually, but either way, due to a flags and banners purchase uh, uh, for Main Street. Uh, the recreation is a decrease of 12.9% and fiscal services an increase of 48.8%. And like Councillor Del Deloria said, that is due to our provincial grant increase and the amount that Council has increased into our reserves. So we've increased uh, into our landfill, uh, fire truck uh, reserves. We our recreation reserves uh, have seen more money get put into it this year than we ever have in the past. It's where we need to go. Okay, Mr. Harvey. I think that was. Yeah, uh, CAO Pool covered it. I'm just gonna say. Go ahead. I think that was all I had for questions. Okay. Go ahead. You got a question? Yeah, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try and uh, throw my voice all the way over there, but uh, if you can't hear me, you just let me know. Um, under the swimming pools and beaches line, uh, uh, you, you budgeted uh, 574000 last year. Now, if I remember correctly, the, that was considering the pool being reopened in September, at least at budget time, and the pool was also open for the first three months of the year. Uh, now, the budget has gone down for that line item, and I, I'm wondering if you can tell me uh, what, the, uh, what the plan is for opening the pool this year. Okay, well, what I can tell you right now is uh, council's kind of working through that as we speak. We are not, have not yet announced what we call a soft opening yet. Uh, we do have our lifeguards that have gone through the process of the recertification. Uh, they have also received their first aid and so on. Right now, the, the crew there is working on their, um, uh, I guess their safety uh, plans and all that with the COVID restrictions and a plan that has to be detailed that we have to present to Manitoba of Health. Once that's done and approved, then we can proceed. So at this time, we're not quite ready to say, we'd like to see how it's sooner, but uh, uh, we're, we can't say quite yet until we have this plan in place. But uh, we do definitely want to get it open as you can see, but uh, we're working on that. I don't know if uh, Mr. Fedorchuk uh, wants to speak on that, but I think I covered it off pretty good. Oh, yes, he covered it. Go ahead. To follow up that question, uh, I noticed that next year the budgeted amount is seven hundred thousand, and is is that reflective of uh, what that would be for a normal operating year? Um, CFO Ganita will respond. Yes, that's uh, for a normal year. I think that's all the questions I have. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Any comments from council? 
I did, okay. uh, but I think I answered my own question. I apologize for being late. Uh, I just wanted to know who all was on online, but I think it was just Karina, and then we have a late joiner, uh, Bill, and that was all that was That's right. online. Okay. Okay. Councilor Delorier. Um, just refresh my memory on how that worked with the, uh, uh, we received the grant for the incident command vehicle, but uh, so did that, did that grant, did it, it didn't cover the whole, the whole amount? Because we still have uh, some debt we're paying on that. How, how is that all working? Was it just, you know, when that is going to be done being paid off? Darren, do you want to detail that? Or Chief Norchuk, sorry. Uh, no, I think that'd be more uh, see if Obanita's wrong. Okay. Uh, the incident command uh, vehicle was financed in two parts. The vehicle itself was uh, borrowed and uh, add-ons where it came from reserve. And so the fire protection grant that came from the province council resolved to put it back into reserve to replenish the reserve for future use. Anything further? Councilor Delorier? Yeah, I'll just want to uh, comment on administration's hard work into uh, preparing a, a very reasonable uh, budget uh, for the year 2021, especially with all the unpredictable COVID scenarios that are being portrayed to us. And uh, with a 3% average, um, as mentioned by a CFO pool, I think that's a very uh, appropriate uh, level to be at where we can uh, begin our path forward to a stable, predictable tax increase from year to year so that people uh, can know what's predicted from one year to the other instead of the past history where we can go from uh, increases of 13 plus percents to decreases of two, three percent. Um, so as we outline in this year, where we have some increases to our reserves where we can actually stabilize those uh, expenditures from year to year. So um, I thank uh, council for working hard and uh, administration for together for an appropriate budget that uh, um, reflects an increase that uh, even over the two-year period uh, where we had a decrease from last year from 1.8 percent average or something like that or close to two percent so basically in a two-year period we're only at a one percent increase which is uh, not even the cost of living so. okay thank you anything further okay um, yeah, I, I echo the same sentiments and thank all administration, CFO, Gunita, his hard work also on the, on the financial plan. It's not easy when they have to start tearing it apart and, and seeing uh, where some light surprises might be and, and, uh, and, and uh, definitely uh, make sure that the, the uh, taxes remain at a you know, constant or minimal increases, if anything. It's very important. And how we will plan on how we do a financial plan uh, moving forward in the fall of 2021 and beyond and how that might uh, look is going to be uh, a better way of how we're uh, going to do our planning our financial plan those uh, CF, or CEOs uh, pools first budget so I thank you for the presentation today and, uh, and the, the uh, slides that you've done it was a good good job and uh, I do invite anybody that uh, didn't get a chance to see this tonight or didn't quite understand it, uh, feel free to uh, get a copy of the financial plan again by email or come to the office and get a copy of it. Or uh, at the same time, meet with any of your counselors. That's what they're here for and, uh, and answer those, any of those questions that uh, you may have. And that will conclude that. So, Resolved that council close the 2021 financial plan public hearing. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. This hearing is now adjourned. Thank you.
being that everybody is here and we can start early, we have everything already recording. I'm going to call this regular meeting of council for May the 4th, 2021 to order. Resolve the agenda for the May 4th regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Council Friesen, seconded by Council White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve the minutes of the April 20th, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Council Morial, seconded by Council Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving right down to 7.1. Resolved that the pub, uh, sorry, resolved that the director of public works report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Deloria. Um, the patching on the main street south there. When do we go? go for that goes out for tender. I assume as part of our overall uh, asphalt tender. Or uh, that was tendered last year. Oh, okay. And, uh, so Sterling won that. Okay, that was tendered as part of that project. Yeah. Okay, so do, we, do we know when they'll be in town to do that? Uh, I'm just touching base with them. I don't have the exact date yet. Okay, further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721. Resolved that March 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Some discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 722. Result of building permits 1921 through 2321 with a total estimated value of $132,000 be received. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Reports, Council, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Right on the spot today, Your Worship. No worries. Um, the only meeting that I did have was with uh, Councillor Morio and Councillor White. Um, we spoke with uh, Sergeant Steve Henson. I think that uh, Councillor White, though, uh, the Chair of Protective Services, will be able to speak more on that. Uh, but I did attend that and it was a very thorough report and I know that Councillor White was taking some great notes so I'll leave that one for you Councillor White. Other than that I have nothing else to report at this time. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Friesen. Um, please care meeting yesterday and I have an appointment with Mary Mitchell, who is manager of an eight-friendly coordinator from the city. She's uh, going to meet on the phone, I guess. But in that, uh, I don't know. Councillor White. Councillor White. Yes, sir. Uh, relatively busy two or three meetings with pmh and i guess there's some bottom lines i don't know how we get it across better with the community but until we get our vaccines this uh covid virus is going to continue so those of us who can get the vaccines i would encourage you to do that as soon as possible uh, there's a new ceo on the way uh, hopefully in the next month or so and uh, we're looking for more community input on how to solve uh, health care, I'll rephrase it, to make health care a good process better. Uh, the Swan Valley Business Consortium with uh, 
uh, Councillor Deputy Mayor uh, Rintoni, uh, as co-chair with, uh, the issues are really identical to the issues with the RCMP. So I've given both at the same time. The methamphetamines are causing significant uh, concern in our community for all sorts of obvious reasons. Poverty uh, at all levels. Uh, good news with the COPP, I'm led to believe uh, that's close to fruition. Uh, there's a, uh, a new staff sergeant on the way, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of June. We don't know who that person is, but apparently they're close to being here. Uh, and, and again, uh, a positive communication with Sergeant Hanson, and the one we will continue to do, and uh, he's always so cooperative. Uh, the Sport Valley Sport Fish Dinner went well. I, we don't have the numbers yet, but that money stays in the valley, and the valley as a whole uh, certainly supported. 500 plus dinners served, uh, etc. It was just very positive. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's about it. Uh, wash, keep your distance, get your needles. This is a, an ugly virus, it's mutating, and we have to be cognizant uh, that it's going to cause problems in, in all of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just the one meeting with Protective Services with uh, Officer uh, White and Deputy Mayor Antoni with uh, Sergeant Henson, which uh, Officer White just reported on. So that's all I had. Okay. Councilor Uh Had our uh, Swan Lake Watershed District uh, project planning meeting Thursday before last. Um, we, went, we had you know, we, we narrowed the list of projects this year from down from probably a list of 25 to the roughly 10 to a dozen projects that we'll, we'll do for this year. Um, and that, I guess that's the normal process that it goes under, but new this year for the watershed is the uh, Manitoba Grove project, uh, Grove uh, project, I guess it is, which is uh, the provincial government's uh, put $52 million into an endowment that will be there forever. So the, the interest in that endowment is, is, uh, can be used for any uh, project where, which will buy ecological goods or services. It's kind of broad. Um, this year the, uh, the conservation district is focusing on about three areas that will be, and only conservation districts can access that money. Um, three areas and they're gonna use, uh, hopefully about 250 acres will be able to uh, uh, provide incentive payments for producers to uh, marginal land that they would you know normally you know it's probably crop worthy they can get a crop off at most years but it's pretty wet and they probably going to be the most likely to be drained next with you know tiling or whatever um, that uh, provide an incentive payment to not tile that to not to not drain it so that they can still they can still crop it but you know, it'll it'll still remain a wetland when it is wet, so it will hold that moisture on wet years. Um, but I guess where I'm going with that is a lot of a lot of these for the growth program. A lot of these things are geared towards the rural area, but there's nothing that I've read anyways that would stop uh, you know us making an application if there was something for for an ur an urban uh, ecological good and service, whether it be say a rooftop garden on a grocery store. If something innovative like that, they want to see innovation, and they want to see uh, you know things that are going to provide uh, uh, ecological goods to the uh, to the environment, specifically uh, mostly to waterways. So if we can uh, you know gear gear a project towards helping waterways, um, right now the the watershed has has identified the areas that they're going into, but every year or two years they can they can update their application. So if there's something that would pertain to an urban municipality. I guess bring it forward because uh, right now it's it's geared very rural and I and I don't I want to make sure that uh, if there's something that the us as an urban municipality can do to, to help the uh, the water that we're making sure that we take a look at that as well. Anyway, so it's very interesting going through their typical projects, but then also these uh, these grow projects that are new for new for the whole board this year. So, anyways, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, for me, I guess uh, RISE is going to be moving on with the uh, budget here shortly at their next meeting. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the, the Magnetic Hill sign that was going to be uh, put back up in Benito hopefully soon. Um, uh, this 
the uh, Loren there, she's working on um, focusing on some attention towards what uh, Rise will be, you know, working on in the next year. So that will be coming uh, soon. Um, our cow meeting that we had, obviously looking at what our land sale process will look like in the future here. Um, we did have a couple meetings with uh, shared services and definitely uh, something that uh, is ongoing and, and in our budget that we had for Manitoba's goals, but there's some numbers there that are not appealing, but we need to work on that. And, and that is not like we're not uh, letting that go. We're definitely focusing our attention on that. For people that have looked at the budget, I want to make sure that they know that we are still working on, uh, on that as an ongoing thing. Um, of course, the budget. Um, interesting, uh, having conversations with uh, the MLA uh, Wolshock again on Main Street West. I probably phone him uh, every week to make sure that he's going up to the MI uh, Minister's office and, and finding out what's happening with that because we definitely want to see that project get done this year. So uh, I don't know if we're running out of time on that, but uh, we'll keep pushing the buttons there. So. Uh, other than that, for me, I think that was it. I guess with the recreation, I mentioned a little bit in the budget uh, that uh, what the plans are with uh, the wellness center and the uh, recertification, the first aid, and all that, and the plans moving forward with Manitoba Health approvals. Uh, also, at the hall, uh, you noticed in the budget there, we had some money there for some new gutters there, some upgrades, and also some light upgrades inside the hall and outside as well. That's it for me. I see Councillor White wants to take another go at this, so I guess uh, we'll make the circle and go back in again. Yeah, just a comment relative to uh, Councillor Delorier's uh, presentation there. I can encourage uh, your team on the Conservation District to conserve water enough, regardless of the fact that it's a dry year. It, it may be drier for a longer period of time and those little bits of water here and there, those dugouts, those ponds, those beaver ponds have huge implications relative to water cycles, relative to life on Earth. So I appreciate that the fact that they're not uh, knocking them down. And, and if I was a farmer, I might be draining them. I accept that. But to sitting back as a biology person, I don't think we can leave, leave enough little potholes and ponds alone for the sake of all of us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that Councillor Deloria will take that away. Uh, anything from uh, CAO? Cool. Uh, just to update Council, uh, we'll have the resolution on the next agenda for the by-election if we choose to do so. Uh, I did contact TNR Floating for that deal. Uh, and this are going to be assisted. Uh, just preparing for the strap planning session on May 11th, the hiring of the executive assistant. Uh, advertisement should be coming up quick. Uh, still trying to contact a rep from Northwest Media Council to get that development agreement going and uh, providing information to the commission, airport commission, for our next meeting and awaiting on our summary of union negotiations so our committee can go through in detail for the next meeting in July. I did meet with MLA which up today regarding Main Street West. Okay. The same as you did yeah. Council Priest, do you want to go back again? Um, just on May 11th. Is it Paul meeting? Yes. That's, to be. That's the strategic resource management planning mm. homework. <laughs> All right. And that, that's not going to be cancelled this time. We're really ahead with that. Yeah. That's also a 7-3. Okay, that's everything? Yeah. Okay, Councilor Friesen? I'm done. It's okay. okay, thank you. All right, 10.1. Resolve that counts as follows. We hereby approve for payment. General counts checks number 27459 to number 27538 as listed on Schedule A, totaling 131,817.84 cents. Payroll counts checks number 4848 to number 4854 as listed on Schedule B, totaling 72,974.41 cents. 
Direct deposits totaling $600 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposits the amount of $5,333.11 as per Schedule D. Move by a mover, uh, Councilor Friesen, and count seconded by Deputy Mayor Lintoni. Discussion. Councilor Morial. Uh, check number. 27517 to Valley Water and Hydro Act. Um, what type of work did they do for us that would require their services that we can't provide ourselves? Uh, I'll have to check on the exact one, but there was uh, uh, one where a truck was down, so they had to do it because our truck was uh, That probably was a description. There was one where there was a uh, class three available to drive a truck. There was a long weekend where we had a class three way to drive a truck. Okay. Anything further? Deputy Mayor with Tony. Um, check, or actually was on the Royal Bank visa on March 18th, Flamin sales a rental for the bylaw enforcement. What would our bylaw enforcement be renting? That's what Oh, is that what it is? Council Moray, you meant? Sorry? Oh, that's the fence around Conrad Apartments that we're paying to keep it secured until that issue is resolved. Right. Anything further? Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10 2. Whereas subsections 306 and 306.1 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services on April the 28th, 2021, be made to the 2021 business tax rule with the resulting reduction amounting to $15.74. Moved by Deputy Mayor with Tony, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas sections 162 1 of the Municipal Act requires that every council must adopt the financial plan for each fiscal year in the form uh, in the form approved by the minister consisting of an operating budget, capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and a five-year capital expenditure program. And whereas section 162 2 of the Municipal Act requires that before adopting the financial plan, the council must give public notice and hold a hearing in respect of the plan. And whereas a public hearing has been held, therefore be it resolved that the financial plan for 2021 fiscal year consisting of an operating budget, a capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and a five-year capital expenditure program be hereby approved. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.1 Resolved that bylaw 1 2021 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the collection of residential waste and recycling material as a special service for the town of Swan River for 2021 be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier? Um, just on our, our process, it was mentioned uh, uh, in the budget presentation that uh, you know we're going to try and get things done ahead of time. 
And I know the waste and recycling collection bylaw that has to be done every year plays a big role in that. So again, I would encourage administration to get those letters out, you know, in the in late summertime to, to get the uh, get that whole ball rolling because I know this this one piece can can really hold things up and and. Uh, you, we've done a good job on it for a number of years now. Probably have some good systems in place to, to get this thing ball rolling. But I know it's a, a big, a big item every fall. So um, again, good job on uh, on this year's iteration of it, and uh, look forward to making sure we get her done uh, in good time for 2022. Further discussion. All in favor. Oh, this is a recorded vote. All in favor. Oh, sorry, Mr. Ganita. Uh, just in speaking to the residential waste and recycling bylaw, the, we don't get assessments from the province until uh, early December, so we can't do anything before then. It's not ready. Mr. Harvey. The letters you're referring to, that was with was commercial. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we had to send those out and we could do those ahead of time, but uh, that's residential. So Yes, that's right. So we've split those in two now, yeah. Okay, it's carried. 11.2, resolve that by law 2, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to administer and enforce the design, construction, erection, placement, and occupancy of new buildings and the alteration, demolition, and change in occupancy of existing buildings in accordance to, with the Manitoba Building Code be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen, discussion. Being none, recorded vote third. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Sorry? Two opposed? I only see one opposed. I think you still had your hat up when. Oh, no, oh. sorry. Okay. Sometimes it didn't bring it down. 11.3. Resolve that bylaw 3, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend the zoning bylaw, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Dimitri and Tony, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Third reading is recorded. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven. Eleven point four. Resolve the bylaw six two thousand and twenty one being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate for up taxes for two thousand twenty one be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result the bylaw 7 2021 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a landfill capital and closure reserve fund be read at first time. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Sorry. Opposed? Carried. Resolve the pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council Goal the Committee and close the meeting of the public. We have municipal relations to discuss. Moved by Councilor Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councilor Friesen. 
All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We're in committee. Yeah. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.35 p.m. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.